Howdy everyone. How's everybody doing? It's unusual for me to um, stream on a Sunday, but uh, I couldn't do what I wanted to do on Friday, so uh, that's why I'm doing it today. Um, I'm hoping folk can join us. Um, let me know what the audio levels are like. They look okay so far. Uh, streaming looks good. I'm not dropping frames. More importantly, I have tea. Thanks, Laurie. Laurie's telling me that uh, the audio is fine, which we like. Let's get a bit of extra light in here. Mm. So how's everyone doing on Sunday? Have you had a good weekend? I've been a f tad busy, but I had to do a whole bunch of... Um, normal Saturday chores yesterday as I always do but I also had to do a bunch of gardening try and tame some of the wild growth there's some small trees that have decided to grow at the very front of our um, property which are actually beginning to impede on the pavement so I had to cut all those down. They shouldn't even be there, but uh, we get seed bombed by local trees. <sighs> and then I had to, uh, you know, cut all the grass in the back, etc., etc. Let me check. I've got my um. Say that we're live to everyone. So what you've been up to, uh, Laurie? Anything interesting this weekend? Audio volumes could be a bit low as I have my volume near its maximum. Oh, hold on. One, two, one, two. Yeah, that is looking a little bit low. Um, don't think I changed the level. Let me just double check my um, settings. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, mm. Hold on. Input. Yeah, it's on full. Um, full. Ah, I know. Maybe I was missing about with this the other day. What about now? Is that a little bit better? should be slightly um, higher. Hold on. Game one or game two. It's game one, I think. Is that a little better? Apologies. Yeah, I was messing. I decided to, um, because of the problems with the hum or buzz on the mic, I tried, decided to take the cabling and the mic apart. I looked at the mic, the mic connectors look fine, but I cleaned, the, cleaned them all with some uh, alcohol. Um, and then on the connector, I clean the inside of the contacts of the XLR connector as well with alcohol. Um, hopefully that solves the buzz that we've had. Oh, you've been working on the ULX4M, nice. 
Anything new or same old? Stuff that you're working on before. Retro stuff. I don't know how many people we're going to get because it's unusual for me to do this on a Sunday night. So, um, let's get a few minutes because other people may come along a bit later. Today I was working on a couple of things. Ah, oh, still retro stuff. Getting the Sega Master System working. Wow, so cool. What did I see? That made me think about the retro earlier today. What was it? Uh, I to remember. Something that made me think about the retro stuff. If I can remember what it was, um, now it's gone. Oh, it says I'm changing things to um, use the flash loader as the ESP32 on screen display it does not currently work with the ULX4M <laughs> does it have an ESP32 on the ULX4M Laurie or is that is that expected to be external on the carrier board? sure I announced the stream was live on Discord. I see some people there but they haven't joined the stream yet. Uh, Laurie says there is a hat with an ESP32 but I'm not currently hat Goran thinks that he may not keep the ESP32. Interesting. When you say hat, you mean the carrier that houses the um, ULX4M has a Pi expansion uh, header, which you can put a normal hat on. Because you're talking about using, what, the standard... Um, Raspberry Pi carrier board, as in the Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi CM4 board.
Um, I should probably just put a link in just in case. Strange. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Let's try again. Please work. There we go. That's for all you folks that don't have the link. I sometimes forget to post that, which is a bit naughty. I'm using the Waveshore Nano board that also have an RPI header. Oh, right. Oh, because that goes, yeah, that's the compact one, isn't it? It's very clever. In fact, I'm trying to, I'm trying lots of different carrier boards and lots of hats. Well, that's the advantage of the CM4 route, I suppose. So that's a good thing about you know being able to get access to an existing market that already has you know a number of um, carriers out there you know that was one of the smart things about going down the CM4 route for Goran I mean, it's not all roses, there are some issues, but um, that's one of the kind of cool things is that you can, um, you know, select from a whole bunch of carrier boards that already exist in the marketplace. See, we have a few other people joining us now. Welcome, everyone. Do let yourself know. Make yourself known if you can. You can either use the uh, stream chat or uh, the live channel um, down on uh, Discord. So I should probably just get a link for that whilst I remember. Now, both ways, so there's a link from the uh, Twitch stream to, excuse me, to the um, Discord and then from Discord to the Twitch stream. Our bases should be covered with any luck. Uh, 
Um, right, so the first thing, so I've started, re remember last time I talked about, um, I needed to uh, rearrange the, um, or refactor some of the stuff into different repositories. So I, I've started that, because I needed to do that for, um, certainly for the ICE Logic Bus and the Black Ice NXT boards, because I want the hardware parts of those to be separate for now. Um, so I've started doing that. I haven't started moving the software and HTL over yet because that's a bit more um, bit more involved. Um, so let's just cover that. Let me just switch to here. So if we look, um, the most obvious one is the Black Ice NXT repository, which you'll find um, under my repos. Uh, let me post a link to that here and here so at the moment I've just put holding stuff up there so it's got the CAD files for the PCBs uh, short description um, some pictures of the PCBs which I've got and um, obviously the CAD files so in the hardware you'll see the CAD files, those, those are obviously Eagle files. Uh, in the PCB there's some shots which I'm going to show you in a sec and then we've got some uh, a shot of the uh, PCB in the um, schematic. These are just images at this point. So um, I put a little summary up here just to remind people because I know there are going to be people that don't actually know what Black Ice NXT is. So Black Eyes NXT, when combined with the Eyes Logic Bus, replaces what currently exists in terms of Black Eyes MX, uh, and that's going to replace it uh, effectively in June. That's when we're that's that's kind of the the launch. Prior to that, we're making them available to developers in developer kits. If you if you want to be involved in that, let me know this week. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more about that again in just a bit. But let's go for the repo for a moment. So feature-wise, um, this is probably just a recap for most of you. Um, it's uh, an STM32 based uh, system board. Um, it's actually an STM32F730, which is a Cortex M7. Uh, it's 216 megahertz ARM um, Cortex 7. I think it has 256k RAM and 64k flash. I think that 256k RAM is slightly wrong. It's actually, a, it might be a bit more than that because it's got different sections of RAM. Um, also on the board is a 64 megabit hyper RAM and I think it's 128 megabit hyper flash. I need to double check that. Those are on the board for the mid plane. They're not actually directly accessible to the STM32. They're for the FPGA running on the mid plane. I'll come back to that in a second. Um, we have 16 megabits of SPI flash for local storage uh, connected to the STM32. That's good for storing things like the FPGA image and anything else that we, we, we may want permanent storage beyond the internal flash memory. Um, which is only 64k inside the actual STM32. Uh, there's external crystals for the high speed external interface, 25 megahertz, and for the low speed, low power crystal, the 30, you know, the uh, RTC crystal, 32 point, I think it's 768 kilohertz. Some of this is going to need editing. I knocked it out earlier. There's a 40 pin expansion via an FBC connector. Um, which basically outputs some of the FMC signals, in particular um, parallel out with a view to connecting this possibly to um, something like an OLED or IPC or IPS LCD type thing and we're working on that but that's not, not tested at this point. But that's there, it's a 16-bit interface. Um, 
there's a QSPI interface to the FPGA that lives on the mid plane. That's basically a nibble based interface that can go up to about 108 megahertz on from the STM32 side. Although we've got a lot of optimization to get that working at that speed with the FPGA, we're currently working in the you know uh, tens of megahertz regions. Um, there are free microblade sockets. I will need to put a link in to explain these things. These are very new. We've only just introduced this 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 concept. Basically, this is reusing the um, the SD card sockets for small interfaces of up to six IOs. Um, I, I, I've, I've got some stuff to show you on that to make that a bit more clear. So we've got three microblade sockets. Uh, there's a regular SD card socket, which is um, I notice there is a typo. I'm just going to correct that. So the uh, SD card socket is connected to the SDM32 microcontroller that supports SD and MMC. It's a 4 4 bit wide interface. There's an SWD connector, which you see at the top here, which can be used for doing debug connections to the SDM32. There is a USB C connector which you can kind of see here. I know it's not very clear on this picture, but it will do. Uh, that's a USB C that has is basically running uh, the firmware running on the STM32 Black Crab firmware provides us with a uh, USB CDC serial, um, which you've seen us talking about in the other stream. Do look at the other streams if you want to know more details about that. Far off any questions if you don't already get that. And then we have the uh, an RGB status LED, uh, which sits down here, and a mode mode button as well. I've got the schematic. Uh, here are the pictures of the PCBs. These are the latest ones. So the good news, folks, is my PCBs have arrived. They actually arrived late on. Uh, I got I got them later on Friday, but because we couldn't do the stream, I couldn't couldn't let you guys know. So I know that I've got the PCBs now. Uh, that means that uh, I'm going back into hardware mode because I need to. I'm going to put together the development um, kits uh, over the next week or so. Next two weeks. Just another typo. Interesting. Is there any more of these? So, um, yes, there is another typo here. Something's been correcting these. This is really strange. I wonder if, um, let me just um, update that. Uh, refresh this so yeah that's the uh, black ice NXT do, do, do. Should we put NXT do that on the next update um, that's the top view of it before as you see now this is smaller than our previous um, version um, let me see if I can show you the big difference now between this and the previous one. If you remember the previous uh, Black Ice NXT board looked like that. Can we get some focus, do you think? Just. Uh, There we go, that was the previous one. And this is the latest one. Uh, 
as you can see, side by side, significant saving of space. In fact, it fits within the boundary. So we don't need the prongs and the apertures on here because they're not relevant to the what we used to call mezzanine board which I'm thinking of calling the systems connector or systems uh, board expansion whatever you want to call it I wouldn't say it's expansion because it's actually fairly necessary at this point So um, that's the board. So we've got our bases covered on that. Then the other thing is the mid plane. And I am referring to this now officially as the mid plane. In this case, the mid plane we're concerned with is the ICE logic bus. Um, this has changed a lot less than the previous version. Um, the main changes are over here because I migrated the power the USB power delivery down onto this board where it belongs. So you can see there's now a USB connector here. It's one of the newer USB connectors that I've discovered that has only six pins, which is designed purely for power delivery. It just says the CC pins and the power pins doesn't have any data pins. Um, there's also another hard connector up here for doing things like batteries and all. We'll explore that at some point in the near, near future. There's the um, schematic. I don't think there are any other changes on that board. It wasn't, um, wasn't there's a few, this resistor array here is new for the I squared C. That was migrated from the black ice board. Um, I think that's it really. And then the um, LED has been moved down to here. So they're going to be on opposite sides, the uh, LEDs. The um, black ice versus the um, ice logic bus. Uh, schematics there as well. That's just an image of the schematic at this point. I will do PDFs of those eventually. So this is what it looks like now, the new one. Um, doesn't it look just sexy in gold? Couldn't resist. Um, with those apertures and prongs, I think that looks really nice. Um, there's the top, obviously reflecting what we just saw on the schematic on the um, CAD diagram, um, and on the bottom, very similar. That hasn't changed since last time. So let's have a look at that. I can show you the new ones. There we go. Wow's a look at that. Aren't they gorgeous? And can you see the names on there? Maybe you need to go closer. Much closer. Also tribute to on the bottom. Laurie says I'm famous. You are. All the boards I'm gonna ship for this will have your name on, Laurie. Let's focus now. Come on. Uh, 
How about that? Is that your, is that a first for you? <laughs> so um, when these two go together, interestingly, I wonder if I've got any. Um, I just wanted to show you briefly how these kind of fit together, how it looks. I mean, I'm, I can't obviously show you the, um, damn it, I only got M3s. So these M3s, yeah, these are M3s. Just want to show you how it assembles because it's quite interesting the way it um, goes together. Sorry, I'm just finding the right screws for this. Um. Please chat amongst yourselves, folks. Let's just sort this out. I just want you to see how it fits together just so that you understand how it's um, stacked.
see if this one fits. You can see it in its full mechanical glory, albeit minus the uh, surface mount components, of course. But it's just to give you an idea of um, construction, really. The mechanics of the situation. So the skeleton So the skeleton then looks like uh, this. So that's your top view. Let me see if I can get some focus. Can't see much from there, but if I start twisting this around, you'll get an idea of the sandwich, if you like. So on top, I've got kind of these um, the black. Uh, spaces and black on the top so those don't stand out because there's no pads on the top that that needs and then if you look at the aperture connections I just notice I'm missing one So there, if you look at the uh, aperture parts where the tiles come up through, you see these, I'm using brass connectors to go with the gold flush of the prongs. And then if you look at those underneath, you, I've then got the spacers on those. So from that point of view, you can then just put the tiles on. I can't do it properly because I don't I haven't soldered the actual um, connectors on for the tiles. But effectively, what you're looking at is so. If we take, for example, the um, double tile that would fit on the bottom like that and then we've got our pre-story building mechanically how it works cool huh and very shiny I do love the gold 
especially with the logo and stuff. It's kind of nice. Tea time. Refreshments. So yes, the boards arrived from JL, uh, JL PCB, which is really, really cool. That was early. I didn't expect them to tip up on Friday. I was expecting them next week. I thought we'd be lucky if we get them for Wednesday. But that's good. That means I can make an early start tomorrow on putting the hardware together. Um, so what else did I get? Obviously, You've already seen these, these double ones. Um, Tile-wise, there's nothing new, but obviously what we're gonna provide with the development kit uh, is obviously the VGA tile. Trouble focusing. Seven segment tile. Too much behind it. Um, DDI tile, or that's going to be a new version of this. This will come a bit later. That will come in next month's batch. And then the stepper tile, again, that's going to be a next month batch. But um, interestingly, I also got these protos now is it going to be able to focus on these probably not easily uh, let me see if I can show you those I have a picture of those that, bear with me Um, let's see if I can share this. There you go. So on the left hand side is the uh, ESP32 C3 Mini adapter. Then uh, on the right hand side over here we've got the LCD adapter or OLED adapter for the small uh, spy based displays. And we have the LEDs. It's just six LEDs, six surface mount LEDs. The test one. And um, they do fit in the SD card uh, socket, which I will show you in, in, a, in a sec. Um, so if I get the older version, Remember the last version that we had? Um, this one, the big one. Uh, underneath that has an SD card, right? Uh, it currently has an SD card in it. So I'm going to take the SD card out. Now if I take the if we can get some focus on this, it's going to be difficult to see. 
So if I take this, and then what I can do is plug in the LED card there. I'll have to hold it because there's a slight issue. It's very difficult to see there. If I turn it around, you only see the back of it. Can you see I'm actually holding it in? Now what it is, is the way that the spring latch works. It's not, for some reason, it's not catching on as it should. Um, so what I did was on the um, LED one, I filed it down slightly. Hold on. And that does actually click into place. Not quite as soundly. Oh, come on, focus. It's going to focus that close as good as I can get it. So they do actually fit in, but I do make, need to make just some slight uh, um, slight mechanical change, and I'm just just need to shave a little bit off the edge. Uh, specifically uh, this the, the corner edge here at the top where it slopes away uh, Ed's telling me something your readme says three micro blade sockets but there are five footprints around the edge of the board are those five or three I'm not sure good point you are correct there is a mistake so let's correct that actually um just click away for that for a sec. Uh, no, let's click into that and choose um Read me, read me, here we go. So here is the, uh, so let's just check that. It should actually be four microblade, microblade, Four microblades, blade sockets. So we've fixed that. Very important. Let me just um, zoom in a bit there. Thank you for that, Ed. Any other typos, let me know. So, yes, if you look at the board. Just these column widths. There we go. So if you look at the board, oh, I can't get the whole thing on. Hold on. I'll tell you what I can do. Let me just adjust this window slightly, folks. Because it's actually gone off the screen. So what I can do is So on here, basically the blades go uh, 
one, two, three, four. The one at the top here is just an SD card connected to the STM32, that's not a microblade. This one, this one, this one, and this one are microblades. And there's three, four microblades, and this microblade here has a dual purpose, so we can actually use a TX and RX pins as two of those if we need to. In fact, this this blade this blade socket here is a good candidate for the ESP32 because then the top two i top two IOs I'd use for uh, UART. So yes, thanks for spotting the mistake, Ed, and also yes, you're quite correct. So there is one SD card socket up the top left here. One, two, three, four uh, microblades. Well spotted. Um, did I put that away? Here. So yeah, I, I've I've got to do a small adjustment on the um, on these little SD cards so that they fit in nicely like that. So I'm still not perfectly happy with it. It's going to take a uh, a few tries to get those right. I expected that, frankly. Um, and um, 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 I might might go thinner. Those are currently 0 0.8 millimeters. But if I look at the SD card, they're actually, you know, quite a bit thinner than that. If I look at the standard, SD, um, standard card. So I might go down to 0 0.7, possibly. Um, on the next run. Although on SD cards you find it's thicker at one end. But I think it's only the lip that's thicker. So it's going to be interesting to um, start trying those out electrically as well. I will have to fire all the ones I've got just slightly so that they uh, they do go in properly. Um, but yeah, I'm happy as a first attempt for the microblades. Those they seem to fit nicely, which is good. And there's a nice click to them on these uh, sockets. So I'm going to put the old uh, board back. So this is all rather excellent all seems to have come out as I expected and I will proceed uh, with the construction uh, tomorrow morning so um, someone was asking me about the developer pack and they were asking I mean I kind of gave a, a rough idea of the uh, developer pack price in dollars and someone was asking for it in euros and I thought oh well this is I, I can't easily do that best thing to do is I'll just say in uh, in in pounds English UK pounds GDP uh, which is a hundred and fifty pounds and then you can just work out what you need to pay in your local currency when you PayPal me so just a reminder what you're going to get for those developer kits. Obviously you'll get all these parts but with components on. So you get the ICE Logic uh, bus board, you'll get the Black Ice NXT systems board that sits on top. I'll provide some spacers and screws and that kind of thing. You'll get the double um, the double proto tile, which will also have, which I don't have on that one, I'll include the Uh, 
I will include the um, P mod and uh, mix mod connectors so that if you want to use it for those purposes for adapting P mods and mix mods, you can do so. Um, you can solder them in if you like. I I'll include them in the package anyhow. Have I bent one of these pins? There we go. So you'll get the mix mod and P mod connectors so that you can um, populate those. The header, surface mount headers will already be reflowed for you. Remind me to talk about how I'm going to deal with the underneath connectors. So I have a plan. Cunning plan. So you get that and you will get obviously the tires I mentioned, the seven segment, the VGA. You'll get those in the pack. Um, I might include uh, a couple of these blades. I can't include the ESP at this point because I don't have the minis to populate. But I'll include the um, the LED blade and maybe the uh, FPC blade for the little OLED. And um, um, I will file them slightly as well so they fit. And then you will get the other tiles when they're ready as well. So. Next month, I'll send out uh, an update pack with the, H the new version of the HDMI tile that I'm working on. Um, and um, if I can get the parts, the stepper tile as well, possibly. Um, but we'll see. But there will be basically another care pack next month. Um, but you won't have to pay for any of those tiles. The only thing I will charge for is the shipping. Um, and that's going to vary depending where I'm sending it to. Um, the tiles and the microblades that I do uh, prototypes for in the future, you will get a version of that because I want you guys as, an, as the key developers to, to test those. So you'll get those complementers. But I will ask you to pay for the shipping. Um, and in terms of payment, what I do is you, you need to pay a wood at netmean.com and I'll, I'll post that actually on Discord, but so I remember. Uh, that's my PayPal. And I will need I will probably ask you for your details. So if you confirm over Discord, then I will need to ask for your um, address details of where you want it sent. Uh, I don't know if you can DM me direct yet. Can you DM me as part of the group? I think you can. Uh, don't forget to send me your address details or shipping Put the amount here so that it's spelled out. Uh, ooh, I think I've got American keyboard. Uh, how am I going to get a? Um, Ew, uh, how do I get my pound symbol on that keyboard? It's annoying. I'll just I'll spell it out. Uh, 
GDP. Uh, so I've posted that in Discord as well, so you've got those details. Laurie says, my Sega Master System has started working on the ULX 4M. So I should be concentrating more on the stream now. Nice. What was broken with it, Laurie? Go. Let me just commit those changes. I think it was only a very small number of changes. Um, more typos. More typos. Um, commit. And push. I really wish it would do this automatically. Hmm. Okay. It was related to the SD RAM, I was saying. Syncing flash reading and SD RAM writing is a bit tricky. Well, I guess so. Is the um when you're saying the flash, is that SPI flash attached to the um, ECB5? Or is it ESP32 flash that you're talking about? Oh. Yeah, spy flash. I presume you mean tricky by timing or interleaving. I've got all the packing and stuff for shipping the boards as well, by the way, or enough to do the developer kits. I'll probably do an announcement on the forum as well. I need to write something up. I haven't had a chance yet. But this week's primarily back in hardware mode, just putting these kits together for everyone. I basically ship them on a first come first serve basis. Um, I write the game to SPI Flash. Make sure you put your name or whatever for the PayPal so that I know that you pay. Um, it was related to the SD RAM syncing flash. 
I write the game to SPI flash with the D with DFU and then it gets copied to the SD RAM on startup. This is an alternative to the on, on screen display. So basically the soft core running is running DFU. Is that, that how it works? And that receives it and then writes it to SPI. And then when it restarts, it knows that it's different and it, well, it just copies whatever the uh, image at, at that location up onto the SD RAM, I guess. So I've got a whole um, load so heavy this is literally full of PCBs I don't know if you can see them in there tile PCBs and ice logic PCBs <laughs> they come in these nice packs uh, Lou Peter moment there's one I opened earlier they all come stacked in these kind of packs and there's a whole bunch of those and the little dinky ones that you get it's terribly small for the uh, blades, micro blades. It does make me laugh. Rather a lot of those. I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on me. I've been reorganising a little bit over the weekend, cleaning things up, ready for the uh, hardware mode. Clear, especially clearing the bench area here because I'll have to do the pasting and stuff there uh, and the reflow. Um, I do need to, I tell you what I do need to check is these, I think these jacks are just right actually. It's interesting because some of them seem to be slightly different to others. I'm just wondering if I've taken a different one out. The thread lengths on the inserts on the spacers are slightly different. But they're from the same, I'm pretty sure, maybe I've mixed up batches, I need to check. So yes, I'm raring to go. So you know what I'm going to be doing this weekend. Sorry, this week. As of tomorrow, I will be pasting, placing, picking and placing, reflowing, testing. Oh yeah, I t that's what I was going to talk about. So remember the problem I had before on the previous prototype, which I notice you can't see. Because I plug something in that USB port, it always does this. It's really weird. I don't see why it's not picking the other camera up. It's definitely on. I haven't whacked it, have I? Ah, I've whacked it. <laughs> it's just the aperture was closed. 
Now oh, everything's moved. Yeah, I've definitely clobbered it. That's the only problem with having it there. It's a really awkward position. Um, um, yeah, I need to change the focus on this. Anyhow. Um, So that's one with the seven segment in. That's the last version. That has the uh, aperture openings on the top. Oh, I've frozen. Great. Just what I wanted. Let me just double click this. Do 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 do. Um, you can probably hear me, but you can't see me. So for some reason, my camera has frozen. They don't seem to be able to get it moving, which is interesting. Uh, bear with me. Very strange. I don't know if I can uh, change this. Hmm. Not had that happen before in a stream. This is very odd. Oh, uh, Laurie's. Um, just posted on the um, live stream on Discord. U ULX4 4M is on a Wayshore Nano board with the Game Pi 5 hat being used as a hex display for diagnostics. Let's mount the hat with a 90 degree header as the Ethernet port was in the way. Cool. Taking the oh yeah, I can see. Wowzers. Nice. Right, back to my um weirdness. Okay. It's gonna be like that, is it? I wonder what happens if I turn that off. Can I add a new source? Maybe that the USB has thrown a wobbler. Yeah, it's not it's not playing ball folks. Wow so
Um, I wonder. Hold on a sec. Let me just check the uh, USB connection. I'm just chasing cables at the moment. Where's that? Joys of computing. Yay, we're back. Wow. I just kind of lost it there for some reason. I do apologize, folks. It was a bit of a pain. Oh, uh, right. What was I doing? I've totally forgotten now. <laughs> Any questions I should ask, I guess. That makes sense. Any questions about the dev kit or anything else? Just in my windows now because they're all moved around since I've been messing about with that stuff. Right, well, I'm glad that's working again. This doesn't look in focus. This. I'm still working on the um, software for the QSPI link. Um, I'm working on the stuff that we spoke about on the last stream. Um, well, Really long or short focus. I'm not quite sure where the focus for this is aimed. Let me just see. Um, oh, that's a bit better, a bit sharper. Um, so I'm still working. Uh, Laurie pointed me towards his and Emard's work um, for the spy spy mem, and I'm I'm turning a um, Q spy version of that. I can bring up now. It's not not yet working. Um, let me see if I can bring that up in the ID.
Why does it always have to change all of these rather than the one I'm focused on? OBS. It is baffling. Now I've got to find it on this list. Here, yeah, this one. I'll just make that a bit bigger for you folks. So uh, this was the Spymem one, but I couldn't get that quite working. It's also a bit tricky to understand this very sophisticated state machine, uh, which doesn't work for QSpy because the counting is different. So um, one of the things I've done is I've used a more um, readable state machine. Let's see if I can make that fit a bit better. So yeah, basically uh, if select isn't low then you're in this state machine. And the way that the state machine is orchestrated from one state to the other is um, starts off with the command. The command, um, oh, before I do that, there was a question from Laurie. What is the 40 pin FMC parallel interface? What is the 40 pin FMC parallel interface expansion? Is that. A physical connector. Um, it's the same as on the um, um, the previous board. Um, in fact, let me show you. Uh, hmm down now I can't show you that. Let me show you it on one of the previous boards. So it's the same as the connector on here. I'll remind you what the previous board looked like that had the prongs. So if I can get a focus. So if you look at the top here where my finger is tapping can you see at the very top there is an FPC connector? Now that's designed to be compatible with a display, which by the way we have here. But uh, it's Totally untested. I may need to um, fiddle with it. So, one of these. I think I linked to these before, but um, let me see. One of these 40 pin FPC connectors. So, this is a 16 bit parallel interface. Uh, LCD, IPS, LCD. Ta-da. So that's what I will be testing it with at some point, although I'm ways away from that. Or alternatively, you can just take the FPC connection off and have a another daughter board if you want, another off, um, off board interface to something if you so wished but primarily I was thinking displays at this point um, to back to this um, HDL so um, the basic format is we send a command, 
uh, this this the byte that we sent here is a combination of uh, the first bit is read or write the most significant bit then it has seven effectively address bits or you could think of them as register bits depending on which way you want to operate you then have a number of address bytes uh, which could be zero if you really wanted it one or two and if you had zero address bytes you've just got 127 registers or peripherals if you like if you've got one address byte you would have uh, two to the 15 address spaces uh, including the peripherals and if you had two address bytes you'd have two to the 31 addresses and by default the data part of it is actually 16 bit wide as well so there's two four nibbles effectively that's expecting um, so when the QSBI command is sent from the STM32 to the uh, synthesized HGL in this case uh, running inside the ICE40 it's looking for that arrangement um, and then you set obviously the widths up here um, these are the address, extra address bits beyond the 2 to the 7 or the 127 uh, depending whether you want one extra byte or two extra bytes and the data bits here that should by default be 16 actually not uh, 8 but you could still use 8 if you want so effectively um, with the two bytes of address you've got up to um, sorry if you've got two you've got three minutes seven sorry 16 seven so if you had two extra address bytes you've got two to the 23 which is if it was 16 bit data words you'd have 16 megabytes access or if you went to free address bytes then you'd have 31 two to the 31 or in other words no you'd have effectively 2 to the 32 bytes or 2 to the 31 16 bit words so you can choose your size fairly easily um, just by when you bring this into existence by setting the data address bits to what you need it to be in fact, that shouldn't be 32. That should be uh, 0, 8, or 16, or 24. And then 7 is added to it, because 7 bits are included in the command byte. Um, so it basically goes through the state machine, collecting the nibbles, uh, serializing the data and sending that out uh, in the same way that the uh, SPY interface did. Uh, and that's a really simple interface. It's basically, um, you know, you've got an address signal your data out signal and you've either got to read if you're reading from the peripheral or a write to when you're writing to that peripheral or memory location so it's really nice and simple it's one clock that I call simple so that's nice and I'm still working on that that's not working yet I'm still got a bit more to do that may get delayed this week because I've got to prioritize the hardware and then come back round to it. It depends. I may get bored of doing the hardware. Maybe some time in the evenings I'll spend doing that as well. Seeing if I can get that tested. Um, so I'm working on that concurrently. And then I can slot that into the Black Crab stuff. I've already written the um, 
the FPGA QSPY commands for that. Um, so that should be easy to slot in when it's tested. So that, that's the other thing I did some more work on this weekend, but I've, I've still not got it quite working yet. Um, what haven't I carried, covered? Uh, Laurie, was there something else that I was meant to cover? I can't remember now from Friday. Is there anything else I mentioned that I needed to cover? Or are we um, pretty much up to date now? I haven't finished redesigning the HDMI thing yet. Oh, on, on the codec side, I did find one of the things that I was looking at before. I did find a link to it. I don't know. Remember we were talking about audio. The codec chip that I was looking at last time, I, I found a reference to it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let me see if I can find it again. Here we go. Let me just switch displays. So this is the ADAU1382. Uh, Laurie's just saying, have you finished, finalised the HDMI and audio tile? No, I'm still finishing it, Laurie. Not quite there yet. I don't have much to do on it. Um, so remember when we were talking about using audio codec? This was the codec I was looking at at the time. It, could you, it, is that readable or do I need to zoom in a bit more perhaps? So this is what I meant by the codec chip. So basically you talk to this digi digitally. Um, and I think you can talk to it either via SPI or I2S. Um, and then what it does is it gives you two uh, differential inputs or single ended inputs for the audio, two channel inputs. So you've also got a mic bias, which is kind of nice. Um, you've got an external beep input, which is uh, sometimes useful if you're changing modes and stuff. It will drive a speaker out, a, a low uh, low powered 8 watt uh, speaker without any extra amplification. And then it also has an analog line out. And it's a 24 bit Delta Sigma with all the uh, filtering etc. So it's actually quite a good quality. Um, so when I was talking about codecs, this was the sort of thing I was talking about. So if we did do an audio tile, um, you could put something like this on. And it just handles a lot of that, um, the analog stuff for you, really. Um, I'm wondering if it does digital in and out as well. Because that's not clear on this diagram. But that's definitely worth considering because I know we were talking about that in the audio conversation online. So I'm just putting an example out there of the sort of chip that you'd place on the tile. It's quite an interesting uh, little device. I don't know if my post is around. I know he was kind of interested in the audio options as well as uh, some of the others like Gates and, and uh, AOL London. So this is quite a good chip. And this is in stock, albeit from Rochester and there's the features which are quite interesting 24-bit stereo audio ADC and DAC 400 milliwatt speaker amplifier to an 8M loan built-in sound engine for audio pro processing including a wind noise filter would you believe 
Uh, five band equaliser including a notch filter. Sampling rates from 8 kilohertz to 96 kilohertz, which is kind of cool. Um, stereo pseudo differential microphone inputs. Uh, optional stereo digital microphone input pulse density modulation. So you can get those kind of um, MEMS based microphone that support PDM. Um, stereo line output, PLL, supporting a range of input clock rates. You can do either 1.8 volt or 3.3, we use it at 3.3. Software control via Sigma Studio graphical user interface. I don't know what that is, but I guess that can enable you to create um, uploadable filters and all sorts of stuff using a graphical tool that probably only runs on Windows. Uh, software controllable clickless mute, uh, software register, hardware pin standby mode. So it looks like quite a nice little chip, but I'm sure there's lots of others as well. If you've had experience with others, do let me know. So that's one for consideration, and there's a block diagram of what's in there. You've got programmable gain amplifiers as well. wonder what the microphone bias is. Hold on. Where is that dictated? Can't see that directly referred to. I'll register map. Right, where's the electrical spec then? Digital filters outputs with a tiny specification power supply. Maximum ratings. Um, so what does it say about the microphone? Yeah, that's not very helpful. Hmm. I don't know if it does phantom or whether that's something else. Let me just do a quick search here. Microphone bias. Oh, this is the low voltage bias. I'm familiar with Phantom, like uh, 48 volt stuff. But what is this bias for? Maybe someone can explain that to me. Interesting. Are these low voltage analog uh, supplies? Don't know. Anyhow, I thought I'd give you uh, a look. That 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 was um, one of the chips I was looking for. This was quite a long time ago, um, but I managed to. Managed to I, kept that link in so I thought I'd let you know I just came across it when I was looking at that stuff uh, earlier. Any other questions on the stuff we've covered so far this evening? I'm just going to get some sugar.
Oh, my USB uh, power delivery chips arrived as well, which is good. The alternate ones, the ones that aren't teeny tiny small CSP ones, but QFM ones, which is good. So that's what I've designed for the... Um, when I moved the power delivery onto the Ice Logic bus, I swapped back to using the ones that we did in the December prototype, the QFN chips. So they arrived as well, which is good. So I've got everything I need, basically. I'm still awaiting a delivery from LCSC in China, but that's just more of a lot of what I've already got. I'm covered for the development batch. I'm going to switch back to the um, here. So I've got to think how I'm going to break that massive MyStorm Ice Logic deck uh, repository up because um, some of that will need to go in here under the Ice Logic bus but not all of it, the tile stuff. I also need to link in the tiles, which I don't think I've done. And I also need to update this. because This is actually slightly out of date now, because the dimensions have changed just slightly. Let me put that back in the um, link here. Wow, I've got so many windows open, I can't even find what I'm looking for now. Huh. Background, my storm, ice. Logic tech. Well, what about the? Um, oh, I've lost the. Um, damn it! I'll put a link in here. Just update that. Hold on. Oh. 
Now, what's that doing? If I refresh this, yeah, I've got the tiles linked in now, which is good. Right, well, I think that covers it then for the stream. I'm obviously going to need my beauty sleep. Because <laughs> I've got a uh, busy old week ahead of me. Um, just a reminder, if you want your development kit set out, let me know that you've paid on PayPal. Make sure you DM me your address. If you can't DM me your address, let me know and then I'll DM you and then or enable whatever I need to enable to make sure that you get that you can DM me your address because that would be useful for sending them out. And I will do them on a first come, first serve basis. So unless there's any other questions, I'm gonna call it um, call it for this particular stream. I will probably stream again on Wednesday with an update. I will obviously be down here on Discord. Um, so we can talk about the um, the build um, and the development kits. I've also got to compose a post up for the forum as well. So that folks on the forum know know about the um, the new stuff and what's going on. Okay, so if there's no more questions, I'll say ciao for the weekend for this evening, um, and let's catch up either on Discord or uh, on the stream on Wednesday. See you, folks. <laughs>